Should you buy the key on Royal Caribbean? I just tried it recently, and I don't think it's worth the money, and I'm going to tell you why up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Royal Caribbean's The Key is basically a VIP access program that's offered on cruise ships again, and Royal Caribbean has changed it just a little bit as they begin to restart cruises here in late 2021 and into 2022. And naturally, a lot of people want to know, is it worth it to get the key? Because after all, Royal Caribbean says it will give you special perks and access while on board that would otherwise not be available to them or unlikely to be available to them. We'll get into that a little bit later. So things like internet access, early check-in, special times and signature attractions, and more are included with the purchase of the key. So does this extra cost amenity make sense to get for your family? Well, I was getting a lot of questions about this and I wanted to try it out myself. I had done the key before the pandemic, but I wanted to see what's it like now. Has it changed at all? And is it a better option? So I purchased the key for an Odyssey of the Seas cruise that I took in November, 2021 in order to get a sense of what anyone sailing in 2022 and beyond should expect when it comes to the key. So let's start off again with what the key is and what it includes. This is an optional add-on that anybody can purchase for their Royal Caribbean cruise that includes special access and perks. Think of it like a way to pay extra to get VIP treatment, faster access, and otherwise have some extra perks that are just nice to have. Royal Caribbean has offered the key for a few years, but then suspended it, of course, but as cruise ships began to restart in 2021. The cruise line has brought back the key for sailings now, albeit with some notable changes. So in order to get the key, you need to purchase it before the cruise begins via Royal Caribbean's cruise planner website. You cannot purchase this on the ship. You must buy it in advance. Here's the list of benefits you get with the key. Early access for check-in to the terminal. Drop off your luggage in the main dining room on deck three by 2 p.m. And then your carry-on luggage will be hand-delivered to your stateroom. Exclusive welcome lunch in the main dining room featuring the Chops Grill menu. Complimentary room service for your entire cruise along with 25% off all onboard dining purchases. Private time at the onboard activities such as the rock climbing wall and flow rider. Priority departure from ship to shore at tender ports. Early access to shows in the main theater on deck four. However, a reservation is needed. Voom Surf and Stream Package, and on Disembarkation Day, a private a la carte breakfast and choice departure. The full list of benefits will be given to you on board the ship, and you'll also get an email usually right before your cruise with a list of them there. So how much is the key? Well, the price of the key varies depending on the sale, and kind of like the drink package, right? But anyway, it starts at $25.99 per day per person, although there can be discounts available to bring that price down. All guests over the age of six in the same room must purchase the key. And when you get to the cruise terminal and subsequently on board the ship, there will be special signs to indicate where guests with the key can go. In addition, your CPAS card will have a special sticker on it to easily identify yourself as having the key. All right, so is the key worth it? Let's break it down. The key certainly sounds like a great idea. I think a lot of people really get attracted to the idea of all these benefits because on paper, they kind of sound pretty good. And especially considering that a lot of these benefits are otherwise not available to them. But in my experience... I found that the benefits sound a lot better on the surface than they really are. Many benefits can be obtained in a different way, but without having to spend extra for it, or the benefits are simply not as lucrative as it sounds. So here are some examples of what I'm talking about. How about the early check-in? Sounds great because that way you can get on board the ship first, among the first people to get on board, right? And that is accurate, assuming you can get there exactly when they want you there. For key guests, you must get there between 11 a.m. and 11.30. If you don't make that window, you don't qualify for early check-in. You fall back to your regularly assigned check-in time. I would also argue on top of that, you can still get that same time on your own by simply monitoring the Royal Caribbean app, looking for when the online check-in will begin, and then getting one of those early slots. I've been able to do this many, many times without the key, never had an issue with it. So just monitor when the early check-in will open, which by the way, if you go to the Royal Caribbean app, go to your sailing. If it's not open yet, it will tell you what day it will open for check-in and then you can get one of those early times. Another benefit, of course, is the welcome aboard lunch at the Chops Grill menu, which by the way, you could purchase on your own without the key. And if you happen to buy a dining package, well, the cost of that lunch is going to be pretty low to begin with. So again, you can get that on your own. Now, the private time of the onboard activities really sounds great until you actually see the list of options that were there. On my Odyssey of the Seas cruise, there were exactly two times that someone with the key could take advantage of private hours. 
First of all, they were at two activities that have limited appeal, I think. First of all, the rock climbing wall and the flow rider. And the rock climbing wall was between 4 and 5 o'clock when we were at Perfect Day at Coco Key. At 4 or 5 o'clock, everyone's getting back on the ship. They're tired from a great day of fun. They're showering, getting ready for dinner. And the other time was the flow rider, which was on a sea day. That's good. That's a sea day. But it was at 9 a.m. That's typically sleep in time or maybe eating breakfast. It's pretty early. And again, the flow rider not exactly the highlight of everybody's wants to do, right? Not everyone's going to want to do the floor rider, so it's got limited appeal there. There is one perk that you absolutely cannot get unless you have the key, and that is the ability to drop off your carry-on luggage on embarkation day in the theater. It's a really nice benefit. Of course, this benefit lasts just two hours on the first day of the cruise, so I don't know that it's worth paying for the entire week of a vacation to have two hours of benefit. Another nice benefit that Royal Caribbean has changed up is free room service as part of a change post-pandemic. But I question really how often anyone will order room service to truly take advantage of it. Breakfast room service is likely the most beneficial time to use room service, but there are so many easy grab-and-go options that I think in general, the idea of having room service is better than the actual thing. The menu is limited, and in generally speaking, most people don't want to eat in their cabin. They want to go out to different restaurants and whatnot, so I just don't know that it's a great benefit. It just sounds like a great benefit. And then, of course, you have the priority tendering, which is pretty rare these days. Most Royal Caribbean ships do not tender. That's when your ship docks off the coast of a port, and then little boats, ferry boats, take you from the ship to shore. There's a lot more piers now that can handle the bigger ships. So it's pretty rare that you would ever be able to take advantage of this benefit if your ship goes to Belize. That's a different story. Maybe it'll be a benefit to you. How about the pre-reserved seating for the shows on board? Sounds like a great one. It does, except for the fact that you must arrive 40 five minutes early to the theater, which negates the entire point of arriving early and having a reserved seating. If you're going to get that early, you can do that on your own without the key and still get great seats. 45 minutes is a long time. In most cases, it's longer than the show you're going to be seeing. I think that's way too long to wait to have quote unquote reserved seating. The bulk of the cost of the key is really the internet, right? Because of course it includes Voom, Surf, and Stream. Internet access on Royal Caribbean is not cheap. And if you were already going to buy a Wi-Fi package, Sometimes the additional cost to get the key is really not that much more. Other times, it's notably higher. In addition, with multi-device internet plans, the key doesn't scale to families or larger groups if internet is always purchased. Because again, if you got three, four people in a room, you got to get three, four key purchases, which include an individual internet package, as opposed to potentially saving money by buying a multi-device package. The key may be a good choice for someone who is going to buy internet access no matter what, and is sailing on a ship with a lot of shows that they want to see. But... I got to be honest, having tried the key before and after the cruise industry shutdown of 2020 and 2021, I just don't think it's worthwhile for most people simply because the benefits look better on paper than they are in practice. If you're diamond or higher in Royal Caribbean's crown and anchor society, or you're a sweet guest or both, some benefits do overlap with the key, which obviously is going to further reduce the key's value. Don't forget, you have to buy the key for everybody in the room who's over the age of six whether or not they're going to use all of the benefits or not. So if grandma's in the room with you, she's going to get that full rider benefit, whether she's going on there or not. I think with a little bit of footwork, you can get very similar results on your own and save a lot of money on your cruise vacation in the process. Skip the key and instead focus on how to get an early check-in time, buy a dining package, pre-purchase Wi-Fi, and then I think you're going to find yourself having a great time on board, saving money, and not paying for a lot of benefits that sound better than they really are. That's my thoughts on it. I am certain there's going to be some folks who disagree with me. Let me know in the comments if you tried the key, especially in 2021, and you think it's a good value, or let me know in the comments if you agree with me that it's not worth it. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That's that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button, so that way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.